hey 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 welcome to my channel unbiased llc today today i am going to be showing you how i fake it until i make it okay and if this is your dilemma stay tuned to this video because if you've ever done machine embroidery and messed up first of all not just messed up but you only ordered a certain amount of products you can't get it right now and the customer is waiting for their item okay this is the shirt that i messed up we are going to fix it together so stay tuned to this video and i will show you all my tips and tricks on how i fake it till i make it with embroidery thank you for watching my channel unbiased llc my name is rachel and if this is your first time watching welcome in i appreciate you for being here you could have been doing anything else but guess what i know you clicked on this video because machine embroidery sometimes do whatever it wants to do we have a plan in motion to make beautiful things for people and sometimes it just don't work out so i am going to be showing you today how i fix certain little things when they mess up and you only have a limited amount of products so whether it be um like a substrate it could be a garment it could be a hat it could be socks if you only ordered enough to cover for what the customer has um, ordered this video is for you okay so i'm just going to show you up close and personal where the the mess up is for this shirt do you see how it bunched up the letters are all it, this is ugly so i stopped my machine when i saw that it was getting to this point and i was like you know what i have to fix that i cannot send this to the customer looking like that it was my fault let me just say that okay and most of the time come in come 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 here most of the time <laughs> it's operator error okay what is this white thing on my nose what in the world Don't worry about that. Okay, I don't know what that is and what it was, but we're not editing nothing out. Okay, so it is what it is. When you're making a video, things happen. Okay, sometimes you take it out and sometimes you don't. But anyway, like I was saying, it's nine times out of 10, it's operator error because the machines are only as smart as the operator. We have to put in what we want the machine to do. The machine doesn't know until we put it in right <laughs> so i'm here to tell you that it was operator error i did not put cutaway stabilizer on this shirt because i've done these shirts several times and i didn't use cutaway stabilizer because that's what i chose to do right and i used tearaway stabilizer stabilizer excuse me but where i messed up at is i didn't use two sheets of tearaway stabilizer so it was not stabilized period what, what uh, period okay so listen um in this next clip i'm just going to show you exactly what i'm going to do to fix this shirt and i'm probably going to end up giving this particular shirt to the client for free why because i messed up and so now i am going to fix it and this is not what they ask of me right um so when you make an error and you have to fix it in a certain way that the customer did not ask for nine times out of ten you probably can't charge them for it even though it's going to be perfect once you're done. <laughs> so there are several ways that you can do this. You can seam rip all of these seams, all of these stitches. You can seam rip this from the back. 
you can use a razor blade and cut it out from the back like just the stitching. You can also use one of those shaver thread removal things that they sell for embroidery. You can do that. You can also just buy another shirt. But if you don't have the money to buy another shirt, I'm going to show you how to save it and present it to the client. And guess what? The new way may be a better way for you and the client. They don't know that this may be the better option for them until you present it. So y'all stay tuned. Okay. And like I said, if you are a new subscriber, welcome in. Please consider hitting the notification bell, the subscribe button, all the buttons. Just do all the things. Okay. Make sure you got notifications on all because listen, okay. I'm going to be putting out videos. And excuse my alarm beeping in the back. Yes, I know it's beeping. Okay, I need a ladder to change the doggone battery. And I will do that today, hopefully. Um, and if you are a, a returning subscriber, I appreciate you. And if you are part of the Purple Patch Crew, <laughs> shout out to all the Purple Patch Crew members. I appreciate each and every one of you. Stay tuned to the tips and the tricks of machine embroidery on a budget nonetheless okay Mwah. we'll be right back okay so here this is just a better look of what the stitches look like before i show you how i'm going to fix it so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to just remove these hanging stitches just so they are not in my way okay so what i decided to do and you can do this also is I decided to make a patch to cover this up so that I don't lose the shirt and I don't lose the customer. OK, so what I want to show you is that the trick that I'm using is I just made a patch. OK, this is the back of it. And this is the I'm going to use these fabric markers. OK. And I'm going to get the color red because depending on which stabilizer you use, you can see the white or black stabilizer on the patch. So I've already taken the liberty of coloring in all of this edges. So I'm just going to show you what this looks like once you color it in. So I'm going to get my red fabric marker and I'm just going to take it and color it just like this. You want to get it on top and you want to get it on the front because nothing else is going to show. If you leave it with the white or the black stabilizer showing, nine times out of ten the customer will be able to see that around the edges. So we don't we don't want that. We don't want that to look like that. Okay. So look, this is what it looks like once you color it in. Okay. So now the next thing we're going to do is I am going to be using some heat and bond ultra. Okay. On the back of this patch. The reason I am using heat and bond ultra is just so. I can stabilize the patch because I'm going to be sewing the edges down on the shirt. So therefore it will not come up. So let me just show you exactly what I'm going to do. I've already cut out a piece of my heat and bun ultra hold. This is the adhesive iron on uh, adhesive um, heat and bun. Okay, let me show you the pack one more time just in case. You need to get this. It says no sew and it's ultra hold heating bun in the red pack. Okay, in the red pack. So I've cut this out of that pack and I am going to place it inside of my patch of the outer edge. You do not want to put Heat and bun ultra hold in the red pack on the outside edges of 
anything that you're going to sew because it's going to gum up your needle okay so i just needed enough to place on here so that my patch will stay down when i get ready to stitch it down so what's what i'm going to do i'm going to heat this on the back of this i'm going to peel the paper off of it and then i'm going to place my patch where i want it to be and then i'm going to heat press the patch onto the shirt and that way when i go to the sewing machine i don't have an issue of it shifting or moving around okay so let's get started and i'm just going to bring this closer so that you can actually see this is the heat and bun ultra i'm just going to place it in the middle of my patch you see the edges do not have paper okay hopefully you can see that so the edges don't have paper okay so let me get and i'm going to use a piece of parchment paper on top just so it does not get on my iron okay so i'm going to place that down i'm going to put the heat and bond ultra hold in the center and then I'm going to put my parchment paper on top, making sure that everything is still lined up. And then I'm going to just take my mini iron and set it down and apply a little bit of pressure. You want like a medium type pressure when you're doing this. 10 seconds, okay? And make sure that your the iron is on the highest setting. So mine is turned all the way up okay this should be set and you want to let or allow it to cool for at least five to ten seconds before you peel the backing this ensures that it stays on to what you're putting it on if you peel it off hot nine times out of ten you're going to get some of the adhesive pulled off with it okay so we're just going to slightly pull and you should be able to see the glue the adhesive see that shiny that's the adhesive this part right here is still dull that means no adhesive got onto this part or the outer edges okay so you should be able to see that all right so now this is ready this is ready so i'm just going to bring my shirt back over and if you can see right here, I place dots onto my shirt just so I know exactly where my alignment is for the patch. Okay. So I'm going to my so the edge of this patch starts at the edge of this dot. Okay. And I'm just going to make sure that it's straight. It may not look straight in the camera, but it's straight, okay? And I'm just going to sit that down just like that. I'm going to put my parchment paper back on top. And then I'm just going to heat set this patch onto the shirt for about 10 to 15 seconds and I'm going to lift my iron up and so this is just a iron burn mark but this will fade away okay this iron mark will fade away so now I'm just going to it's not hot enough hold on I didn't apply enough pressure hold on So I'm just going to heat it and apply more pressure. Did I turn that? No, okay. And let it sit. Okay, now I can't move it, okay? So I'm just gonna let it sit and cool off and we will be at the sewing machine in just one second. And all I'm gonna do is 
sew around the edge with red thread. Try your best to match the thread that is on your patch. That way it's undetectable that is sewn into the garment, okay? So I will meet you guys at the sewing machine. I'm also going to show you, you can also put your patches on with Fabutac, okay? This is another method. You can just glue all the way around your patch and let it sit, put something heavy on top of it, and it will stay on. Just advise your client not to wash this garment a thousand times because it will loosen up. I also recommend you can hand stitch this onto the shirt. Even if you use Fabutech by itself, or if you use the Heat and Bond Ultra Hold by itself, I still recommend you stitch around the edges hand stitching if you don't have or own a sewing machine, okay? But since I own a sewing machine, we gonna stitch around the edges and then this shirt will be complete and I will show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, we are at the sewing machine. Today, I will be using my brother, SE Sewing and Embroidery 1950 sewing machine which this machine is compatible or the same exact as a brother SE 1900. The reason mine is a 1950 is because I have, I got the Joann's version, which was their addition to the brother embroidery machine. It was only sold at Joann's Fabrics, okay? So this is my SE 1950. I'm turning it on and I'm gonna try to zoom in so you guys can actually see. Uh-oh. Okay. What I'm doing. Okay. So let me bring you down. Okay. So I'm just going to press this, my screen, and then everything aligns. Okay. This is our shirt. So if you see, it's not moving. The patch is not moving, okay? And I am just going to do a straight stitch. So with my machine, it is a number, it's on the one. I'm just going to press that, it's highlighted in blue. And that's that. Let me, hold on. Okay, so this should be a better view for you guys. So my stitch, straight stitch is the number one on this machine and my machine also tells me that i need to be using the j foot for a straight stitch so i have that foot on my machine already if you have a um if you have your caddy your undercarriage uh arm caddy sorry on your machine take it off it just will help you to get underneath your sewing machine better okay so this is our shirt and i'm just going to undo the buttons and then i'm going to take the neck of the shirt and slide it underneath the arm of my sewing machine so that i can get inside like i want to be in here when i sew and I have room to move around, okay? So I'm going to be sewing the outer edge of the patch onto the shirt and let's go. And I probably won't show the whole sewing process because I don't want this video to be long, but I'm going to show you and then I'll show you at the end what the stitches look like from the front and the back of the shirt just so you can have an idea of what to do. I'm also going to let you know that the stitch length, I'm going to change this. I'm sorry. The stitch length of on this patch, I'm going to do a 3.5. I don't need a lot of stitches to get this patch to be held down. And the tension is going to be set to a number four. And I'm going to do a start and a back stitch. And then I'm just going to continue on and finish this out. Okay. So make sure you have a universal needle 
which is your either your 7511, your 8012 needle to stitch this onto the shirt with the patch because the patch threads are really thick and depending on what stabilizer or depending on what you sewed, you made the patch on top of like twill or um, polyester, whatever the case may be, you want to make sure that your needle can endure every stitch that you're about to place in. I also recommend when you start this out, drop your needle inside the patch line, the um, the edge, just to make sure that your needle is going to go all the way down and make sure that your shirt stays straight, your shirt, your pants, your hat, whatever it is that you're working on, make sure that it stays straight. Also, I recommend going at a medium to slow speed so that you don't get crinkles in your shirt okay so let me see if i can zoom in where the stitches are so that you can actually see how i'm stitching this okay let's go so a straight stitch 3.5 stitch length and my tension is set at a four. This is my back tack. And do you see this is in real time how I'm stitching this. I'm not going fast because you want to make sure that you're hitting the shirt and the patch at the same time. While you're stitching, adjust your shirt or pants or whatever it is that you're working on just to lay flat, okay? And when you get to this corner or a corner, you're going to lift up your press of foot. You're going to turn your item around, okay? The key here is to make sure that nothing stays underneath the sewing machine except the layers that you're working on i'm just going to slide this my shirt over i'm going to pull it from the back which would be the front or the top of the shirt i'm just making sure that everything lays flat before i sew because i don't want any crinkles if at all possible so i'm going to lower my press of foot and then I'm just going to come down and I'm also holding on to my shirt and I got to the edge I'm gonna lift my presser foot up again turn my shirt and then I'll come to where I started from and this will be done so I will meet you back at the work table so that you can see the finish the front and the back and what the stitches look like. So I've come to the edge where I started from. I'm just going to cut my threads and then I'm going to take this off of the sewing machine and we will have to cut off the, the ugly threads and that's going to be it, you guys. It's real simple. And it's complete. So let me show you what it looks like from the back. Cut this thread. And so I want to show you that you cannot tell because I match my bobbin thread and I matched my the uh, garment so you can barely tell that this is stitched in and this is the front okay you cannot tell where I stuck where I stitched it so let me just um button it back up I'm gonna move the sewing machine so we can see if it's even 
and that will complete this video. I hope that this was helpful to someone. This is just in case you do not order enough materials or products or you just don't have enough products on hand and you need to save it. Let me zoom you out just so you can see that it is it is straight and I'm going to put it up against me so that you can actually see what it looks like. So let me know in this video if you have tried anything like this or how do you save your items so that you don't have to continue to keep buying the same thing over and over and over even though you messed up, okay? So this concludes the video, but let me show you while I put it up to me, okay? If I had this shirt on, this is what it will look like once the client gets it you let me know in the comments if you like this tip trick hack will you be using this hack if you mess up and you're trying to save money and you're trying to save your clients okay because guess what if your client is happy so is your pocketbook or your wallet or your cash app card <laughs> or your Zelle or whatever it is, however you take payments. Okay, PayPal, whoever, it don't matter. It don't matter, it don't matter, it don't matter. I hope this was helpful. And you see how flat it is. You don't even see a wrinkle or crinkle in the shirt. Iron this once you're done, okay? And then give it to the client. So. See you on the next video because guess what? Your girl is always over here working and I'm always trying to show you something, okay? So subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment underneath if you will try this hack and let me know what you think. And if you have another way of doing it, let me know that as well. Also, tell me where you tuning in from. I would love to know. Thank you.